Welcome everybody to the Red G Fox channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So today, this week's episode, it's 8.2. We talked about last week how um, it was an over an 8.0 and anytime you get that high, you're like, this is, this is elite. And there's two parts to this. One reason why I think it's elite and one reason it's not a top favorite of mine. Believe it or not, I know this sounds crazy. Uh, comment below if you feel the same or am I just one of those rare people and it's it, it's not as, uh, I'm the one who doesn't see the importance of it. Anyways, the episode from season three, episode 13, and that is Wine, Women, and Aunt Esther. So just in the title alone, you're like, bingo, this is money. And it's 8.2 IMBD. My only fault with it is I feel like you have the funeral, you have a couple good gags, Esther takes off, we get some fun dance scenes with them, which is hysterical, and then it's just, I, you know, I'm mad at Lamont, Lamont ruins the whole party, left out Lamont, he has to jack it up, right? And so I always feel like at the end of the episode, I'm like, you know what, I feel bummed, I feel sad. They came from a funeral, they tried to get a pep up, and they ended up not getting an evening they had planned. So I think maybe that's why I, uh, like I said, let me know your comments and your thoughts on it. Is it one of your favorites? Is it, do you feel 8.2 or higher? I would probably say 7.8 in, in our channel. Now, with this, let's get to the summary. The summary, Junior Cooper passed away. And it's it's funny that you they mentioned Junior Cooper here. It's the first time. We also hear of Junior Cooper when Fred gets a cheating heart a few episodes from now when he goes to the hospital. And Grady comes and he's like, and he talks about it coming in three. He said someone, and then he says, Junior Cooper, and you must be the third, Fred. <laughs> here it is right here. Wardell Jackson died, and, and Junior Cooper died. They say it comes in threes, Fred. I guess you, you number three. <laughs> <laughs> I love Grady. So it's one of the few times they actually reference another character going to the past. I mean, we saw that even when Donna, she referenced, supposed to be Osgood Wilcox, she called him uh, Osgood Perkins. So they couldn't even get that right. But at least here, they got Junior Cooper right. Maybe because it's the same season. So after they get back from the funeral, they're all bummed. You know, they're all down and stuff. And they go, we got to find something to get us out of this funk. Fred doesn't want to talk about death. And so they said, let's have a party. And they're going to get the women. They're going to have the wine. And Aunt Esther is long gone. And Lamont, he says, you know what? I need to do something to make them feel their own age. Not just act it feel their own age. We know it's probably for their good. I think they could have had a good time and still woke up the next morning. But Fred was treated like this is going to be a, a occurrence all the time. And I don't think his body could have survived if he started living that kind of life. So that's the summary on it right there. Let's get to familiar faces. All right, we only have one today. I know we got a lot of other women in it. There's, They don't even have their names listed in it. But with it, you got Betty Waldron. She is Fast Fanny. We know Fast Fanny fast, faster, and out of sight. <laughs> She's a very memorable character. In fact, she made our channel's top 25 all-time most memorable character list. And I, I want to say she came in the top 20, possibly. I'd have to run a double check, but we'll have it listed right on here, what she finished at. But it doesn't matter. People loved her. She got a whole lot of comments when the, the polls came up as we voted for her. But she's only in this one time. She passed away in 2004 at the age of 63. So she hasn't been with us for a little while, but she did make it to her 60s. Her last role was a nurse in CSI Miami in 2002. But she did other shows. It's great to see these actors who did um, a lot. They kind of like, they do the rounds, right? You're in Sanford and Son. You're in Police Woman. You're in All in the Family. You, you do the thing, Good Time, something like that. She did a lot of these. Let's go over them. She was in All in the Family one time. She did do the Jeffersons two times. She did Good Time. Good 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 times two times <laughs> and she did miami vice you know not something gregory sierra he was actually the original police commissioner in that he didn't like living in miami and after a few episodes pfft, split if you didn't know that we cover gregory sierra's whole background go check that video out probably over six months ago but yeah so she was in miami vice for two different episodes so that is it she all in all she didn't do too many she wasn't in like 50 or 70 like some of our other greats um but she had a, a very mild career but like we said in 2002, she was still acting before she passed away. So that is it with familiar faces. Let's get to our fun facts. Okay, with our fun facts, we have a couple, we have a few scenes throughout this where it's performed, where they're dancing, right? They're doing the scenes and they got the dancing and the singing. We hear the music going off. 
There's two songs by Glenn Miller, just in case you ever wonder, if you want to look these up, right? We already did it on Blind Mellow Jelly, where it's a real singer, a real blues singer. We gave his name and the songs, and that's a real song. Shake that thing, you gotta shake that thing. That's an actual song, so let's l listen to these ones. Wham, uh, wham, be, boo, bop, boom, boom. That's an actual song by Glenn Miller, as well as One O'Clock Jump. So you can look up those songs and actually hear them. And there was Benny Goodman, When uh, Buddha Smiles. I don't know, I never heard that song, but it is on here for that quick bit, When Buddha Smiles. And we got one more fun fact, which is actually very, very, very sad, and people forget it at times. This is the last time in series history we ever get Leroy and Skillet. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Leroy and Skillet. We'll still cover them as we've already broken them down on uh, a video just about them where we cover their quick careers and what they went through and how they met and where they came from. And uh, very interesting uh, to hear both of them, especially Leroy, his background and how he was the uh, only uh, black dancer to ever dance with Fred Astaire. So, and then they made a song, Shoeshine Boy, after him. So he had a great history, Leroy. But yeah, this is the last time. And it sucks because I really think they shine in all their episodes. But this is a great one when they dance and he's like, they're doing the Lindy Hop and Leroy's like, oh, I invented it. And he goes out there and he starts dancing and they all got dancing buddies. So it's a very great way to say, Hey, that's your last appearance. It's sad though that they're gone. Now I've researched this all over. Can't ever figure out why they left. My guess is because they did do other movies. They did do other co co comedy albums and they didn't leave like um, how we talked about Melvin Slappy White, how he left because he had a million dollar contract in Vegas, right? Heck yeah, payday. See ya, bye Fred. You know, thanks for the help on the show, but I'm out of here. But it was someone once mentioned that they had heard, it was a rumor from a rumor and I've never found this out, but that uh, Skillet and Red Fox had a fallout. Something happened. I don't know if it was with another label company or something happened when they had a fallout and they were off the show and never came back. I've never seen that written down anywhere. So if you know or have ever heard that rumor, please comment. Maybe we can help put that to bed and find out if there's any factual stuff to it or not. But this is the last time for Leroy and Skillet. So let's get to the breakdown. Who's your last name? Fast, faster, and I'm psyched. Yeah! <laughs> All right, so in the breakdown, they come home. Like we said, that you can tell right away. They come in, they're all in black, and they're not happy. They're all kind of bummed because they just came from a funeral, of course. And it's Junior Cooper died, and they're sitting there, and, the, and Fred's like, look, I don't want to talk about this. He, he, he wants to move on. The fact that we find out later that he's actually two years older than Junior Cooper. Remember, Grady brings it up. Let's see it right here. Only 64. So that's two years younger than you, Fred. <laughs> nobody asks you how old I am. <laughs> yeah, great. You know Grady, he always, he even has a story later in this where he talks about another guy. Remember when Fred's, uh, Lamont's like, you guys should be working. And Fred's all, that'll kill you. And then Le Grady tells another story about a guy he knew who was mixing cement and died, fell right in the cement. <laughs> so we know that as they're talking about it, Fred's like, I don't want to hear that the guy's two years younger than me. I'm 66. I don't want to talk about it. But they're like, hey, Bubba's like, we can't just ignore it, right? Why? He, he doesn't want to ignore it. But what is one thing Fred feels a sudden loss too, just like Bubba does. But what is Fred's different when it comes to his loss to Bubba's loss? And I feel the loss. I do too. I feel the loss more than all of you. He died on me, nine dollars <laughs> party. <laughs> yeah, of course, Fred's thinking money. He wanted that cash. And now he's not happy that uh, Junior Cooper took off without paying him. <laughs> only Fred is thinking about nine bucks. So as they sit there and they go, that Fred's like, I'm done. You guys are listening. Maybe you didn't hear me. And he gets up. And so he starts drinking and they all do. They're like, yeah, let's take shots. And Esther is, is furious. She's like, how do you guys get to drink something like that? And Fred, of course, we got to drop in one of Fred's great lines. This one I think is funny. Not his best, not gorilla cookies, right? Nothing like that level, but it's still really good. Let's hear the uh, Fred's insult on this one with Esther as she's getting upset at them for drinking. You know, shameful, man. You just came from a funeral. Let's hear it. I can throw some tracing paper over your head and draw me a moose face. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's so funny to think of moose, but I'm like, I don't know. I've heard better. Uh, and maybe that's just it. Maybe some of the jokes you're like, I feel like when you get a certain Fred, it's always top level. I think this is pretty good, but this is not them at their best, in my opinion. Um, but she, Lamont comes home. Right after she, they're kind of arguing, fighting. And I, at this point, I don't even, I'm glad they explain it. Cause I'm like, why are you even here, Esther? You're just getting mad at them. They're not asking for you to stay. And isn't it funny in real life? If you look at that, you got Leroy, Skillet, Bubba, Fred, and now Esther. From Fred and Esther, uh, kids, and from great school friends in real life, 
to now you got Esther did comedy uh, albums and actually did uh, stand up with Leroy and Skillet. Uh, Bubba did it with um, Don Bexley, did it with Red Fox. They, uh, Leroy and Skill, I, Skillet opened for Leroy and opened for Red Fox. And I want to say LaWanda Pages. I mean, that is just a room full of friends and comedy. And I know Grady, Grady came from somewhere else. He wasn't part of that, that lifestyle and that crew. But still, Grady's my favorite friend in the show. So when you get that, you're like, man, look at all the history, talent, and just amazing co uh, comedians and good friends all together. So that's that's why to me, if you said, hey, I'm li I'm putting this episode as an 8.2 because how many times do we ever see Leroy Skillet and Esther together with Grady and Bubba? None, none in show history. So I think that's why it's so high. You know, it's almost like when you give the, the Oscar to someone who's been an actor for 30 years and never got it, and you're like, hey, you know what? We're gonna honor you with this because you have done Harrison Ford type where you're like, you've just done so many different things. I would say Morgan Freeman, but he already, I think he got one before. He's hes too good of an actor. All those guys were too good of actors. So that's why you're like, uh, you feel like, I think that's why it, you gotta give it something 8.0 or higher because all the talent you have, and it's the only time in show history we get all of them together at that one time. But Esther is pissed, she's about to leave, and Lamont comes in. And that's when you're like, that's she does mention, hey, I only stayed because of you, Lamont. But she talks about how good was the eulogy. Let's hear her comments on it. Uh -huh. And Reverend Trimble preached a beautiful eulogy. I didn't believe a word of it, but it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's like that. Hey, I, I didn't believe it. <laughs> so we know Junior Cooper, he passed away. Uh, he drank too much. And because they were earlier, they're talking like, why? What, what, what happened? Did we find out why he died? But it doesn't matter because Esther stayed just to talk to Lamont. And then she's going to get out of there. She's got another funeral to go to. And you're like, oh my gosh. Who the heck would you have? You just came to a funeral and you have another one. Fred knows though. Esther doesn't have to say. So let's see in all seriousness, who is this other funeral Esther's going to? You just left one. Uh, this one is hers, can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's better than the Trace and Moose face. That was a good one where he's all Casey. <laughs> So she's, yo, heathen. So she busts out of there. And Lamont's even saying, hey, man, you guys all got to do something better than this. You got to do something to pick your spirits up. And he, uh, because it, no one wants to sit around talking about dying. And so Fred's like, that's right. They all got the drinks. And when Lamont takes off, goes into the kitchen, he's like, let's, let's drink, you know, raise our spirits. And they start laughing. And, and then they come with an idea like, hey, why don't we get some women company? Because Fred asked uh, Grady, hey, when's the last time you had a date? And I love Grady's answer. Grady, when's the last time you had a date? Last night. Remember you and me sat right here and watched Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out with Fred is not a date. And, that, and I love how Fred's like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Even you don't even remember. Grady didn't even remember. Now, we know Fred goes on dates. He had uh, Carol, not Carol Rhodes, the other Carol. He had the other, his old girl, Tutti Fruity, and then he's got Donna. So Fred's a ladies' man. He can get dates like that. But everyone else in the crew, I don't know. Remember, remember Fred even had a senorita, and uh, Leroy and Skillet with Julio's mom caught him on that. So it ain't a hard thing for Fred to get a cutie. Um, but he's like, the rest of y'all, you need help. And Grady's like, I got the, oh, before Grady does it, Let's listen to Bubba. Bubba's got the best people to date, right? Let's hear with Bubba, because we know uh, his old wife, Mac the Knife, yeah, she, he might know who to bring in. The other frog, I know just the women we want. The butt sisters. Oh, oh man, not them. Not the butt sisters. Hell, no, not the butt sisters. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the butt sisters. I love, I love Fred. They're all chewing them out. They don't want to hear it. So it's very hysterical to say that as they're saying it. And then Grady's got the idea and he talks about a topless dancer at the bowling alley and she spilled a drink on him. And he, I think he still tipped her, so she owes him. And it's fast fanny. And so they're like, yeah, man, we get, the, we get uh, a, a ladies, we get some ladies here, we get some food, get some drinks, have a good old time. Cause, and then the mom comes in and he hears about this. He's like, pop, you, can, you guys can't do something at this age, you know? And he's right, he's right. I think one evening they'd all be fine, but if, if you continue to try to, like that party house they had back when the gangsters came and wanted to profit in on it. So they all take off. They go to uh, go. And that's when he starts getting with Lamont about, hey, we can do this. He's got it. And Lamont's like, no, you can't do this, Pop. Then Grady comes back and we get to meet 
none other than the beautiful Fast Fanny. Let's see. Right Fast here. Fanny and Fanny me Fred Sanford. Hello, Mr. Sanford. Uh, don't be too formal. Uh, just call me Freddie, like you're ready. Yeah, Freddy. she's <laughs> she's ready to go. She's a, a beautiful lady, and I love when they're talking about it. And she's like, yeah, you know what? I'll, we all just, uh, when everyone gets together, let our hair down and go our own ways. And Fred already has his destination. Let's check it out. Sit down and let everybody go for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and, and my destination is in sight. <laughs> <laughs> Fred's got his lock. So we got all the buddies. And she's like, how many people we need? So Fred's naming them all, right? With uh, Shady Grady, uh, Big Boy Bubba. He's got all their nicknames. And the, the best... <laughs> got to show i cannot show this this is one of my favorite ones in this episode as corny as it sounds uh we got to see what is lamont's nickname when the ladies want to uh, are interested in lamont okay and uh which one is he oh that's left out lamont <laughs> <laughs> left out lamont and lamont's want nothing he always wants something to do with that I don't know. I can't figure them on out sometimes. Well, he we know he wants nothing to do with his dad doing this. So she's going to get the girlfriends, and they are going to have a party. They take off, and I love when the Lamont is, is it chilling, and Fred comes down in that outfit, man. We, we got to see that. <laughs> He's a super fly, right? He looks super fly. We'll get to Bubba. What does Bubba call his suit? But it, it, it's just too much to me. I, that's just not Fred. I think I like when Fred wears the charcoal gray or when he's got the uh, the brown jacket, like the one where he meets um, Rollo, when he's got the two girls at Rollo's house. I think that looks more sophisticated and still looks good. Here, all of them, all of them try to look way too uh, hip and young. And remember, they they show up in their outfits and see them. <laughs> Lamont. Lamont's like, oh no. He already knows what these get. It's so embarrassing if you're at that and you're like, man, there's one thing to try to look sophisticated, right? Remember when Fred gets his uh, two buddies, um, Elroy and uh, Hutch, when they're going to go on the date with the women's, they got the zoot suits, right? That's way back in the day. That's their style. They're trying to look young again, but at least it's from their era when they were young. This one, it just doesn't fit. And then Bubba, of course. <laughs> what does Bubba say Fred looks like or what he's wearing? Hey, Fred. That's one of them Superman suits, ain't it? Superfly, Bubba, Superfly. <laughs> Superman, he's like, no, man, it's a Superfly. So they're ready to go, and that's when we start getting them where they're doing the, da, 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 doing the dances. And so smart by Lamont, so smart. He's like, because they're, they're already doing stuff to get hype, right? It's pregame. We've seen uh, NFL stars, the pregame, they're running routes, they're getting pumped, they're in the middle of their, their huddle, let's go, what time is it? They're doing all their stuff, and that's what they're kind of doing for the old folks getting ready for some uh, young hotties to come over, uh, Fast Fanny and her friends, and as they're doing all this stuff, um, they start to get a little pooped, right? They, they do it, we gotta see a few of the dances, because this is some of the best, I think, in this one, even better than the, the beginning, I think seeing them do their dances and stuff, it's pretty fun, because you know they're all good at it, especially Leroy, man. They got some moves, so let's check them out. Yeah, man, their dances. I love that. I like skillets. Um, I love I love Leroy's the best when they're like doing all these different dances and stuff. So. It's, it's cool to see them do that because for people like me who never even lived through that era, wasn't even alive, it's cool to see the dance moves that they bring back and, and they perform it so well. You know, it's almost like a history lesson and it's a show off of talent. I mean, these guys, they can act, they can sing, a lot of them can sing, they can um, do comedy, they can dance. It's almost like you feel there are no limitations. Their own limitations is just what they put place on themselves. And that's why I know we say it a hundred times, but on this channel, Sanford Son, is the, the greatest show that I've ever watched. Um, it, it, they, it was the part we are talking about where they were dancing and they're getting pooped and then Lamont comes in and he, remember he talks fast Fanny and she's like, he's all, yeah, this is Lamont. Yeah, it's left out. <laughs> Let's see him right here. Fanny, uh, this is Lamont Sanford. Yeah, left out Lamont. Listen, are uh, you supposed to be coming to a party? <laughs> he's all left out Lamont. So yeah, that's correct. And he's like, yeah, come on over, man. They're ready. And he goes in there and he, I love it. Let's, we can see it right here as we're talking. Lamont's doing the two-step with Skillet. He's doing everything he can to get them with Bubba dancing. He's smart. He's going, hey, we're having a good time. Don't let the party stop. Don't have a slow moment. 
when reality they should be recuperating so they can have a good time with the girls but Lamont is putting him through the works and he gets them going to where they are so spent <laughs> it's a great plan and you see when they come in let's look at it real fast bad boy Bubba there's Lucky Leroy down there the slick skillet and over here you got Shady Grady and here's the ring leader ready <laughs> they are so pissed they're all <laughs> What are these old men, dude? And then Lamont's naming them all, right? As we just saw, he's naming them all and they are done. And so they take off. It probably saved the men in the long run, um, but I think one night would have been cool. But if they had a great time that night, you know how it is. Once you get something really good, you want to keep catching it and getting it lightning in a bottle, uh, whatever the case may be. And it wouldn't have worked out. So I think Lamont did the right thing for his father and his friends in the long run. And so that's how it ends. When I go through it, this is why I go 8.2. I don't agree. 8.2 based on fans. Because I, I promise you fans will say they love this. It's one of their favorite episodes. I'm crazy for saying it's like a 7.8. I, I wouldn't put an 8.0. Because when I watch it, I don't ever... There's only a few scenes I go, Oh yeah, I'm dying laughing. There's some scenes where I go, ha, ha, You know, you gotta laugh here. But there's only a few scenes and we've talked about most of them. The rest of the time it's just like, Yeah, okay, yeah, that's cool. Or it's just going through the motions. And I think they're setting up a good story and you, the, the dancing and the parts at the beginning where they talk with Esther for a bit. Those are the, the, the top moments. Kind of just like how when um, uh, the, the one with uh, Lamont goes out with his um, Julio's sister. The best part's the end. When Leroy and Skillet run into him at the Japanese or the Chinese restaurant and the Chinese employer, he's hilarious. That's it. The rest of the episode is, eh, it's okay. And I think this is two really good parts and the rest is okay, in my opinion. So share your opinion. Oh, one more thing. Then it ends where Fred comes out and he's got a hangover and Lamont, uh, he's like, no way. He's Fred's like, I'm still going. He, he gets to go to the massage parlor and he's going to go out until what happens? What stops him from taking off? <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> the sunlight. He's like a vampire. He can't do it. And then he asks, remember he goes up and he's like, Hey, Lamont, see if the massage parlor, uh, they can do uh, house calls. <laughs> So it's a good episode. I like that end right there, the way it ends. I, I think that was a pretty funny ending. Um, but yeah, that's it. I would give it a 7.8, which is still an amazing episode. But I do love seeing them all together. But if you said, hey, pop on an Esther episode, this is not one I'm grabbing. Hey, put on a Leroy and Skillet episode. I'm going to uh, the pool room or I'm going to, we want the three degrees. That's why I look at it and I go, yeah, you know what? It's, it's, it's memorable. The only time they're all together, the, that main core. But... It, the, the jokes weren't so memorable in my opinion. So thanks a lot, guys. Continue to watch for our shorts, our trivia, our polls, new games we're putting out. Our last live show, we had the game show. Go check that out. And we'll see more from you again this week. Hopefully this video got out on Tuesday because I was at the Angel game the night before. Ugh. So I'm real tight right now. Talk to you later. Peace.